Shoulder dislocation can come in a different presentation and pathology. And the whole idea of this video is to identify the different lesions that the doctor can see during shoulder dislocation, specifically the anterior shoulder dislocation. Anterior shoulder dislocation is more common than posterior. There is a high incidence of recurrence in the young and there is a high incidence of cuff tear in the elderly. There is also some percentage of patients may get an axillary nerve palsy. Two lesions that can be there, one is the Bankert lesion of the labrum. The other one is the Hilsex lesion of the humeral head. So let's go through the different scenarios that we can see during shoulder dislocation, specifically anterior shoulder dislocation. So if you have an avulsion of the anterior inferior labrum, which is present in about 90% of traumatic shoulder dislocation, that is a banker lesion. If you have somebody old and they had shoulder dislocation, especially if the person is older than six years old, 80% may have rotator cuff tear. Patient may not be able to raise the arm after shoulder dislocation, which can occur in about 5% of the time, or rotator cuff tear, especially if the patient is older. Another scenario is the Hegel lesion, which is the humeral avulsion of the glenohumeral ligament. So the ligaments get avulsed from the humerus and not mid substance and not at the level of the glenoid. It may be hard to diagnose that lesion, and some people believe that an open surgery is better. How about hill sex lesion? The humeral head fracture. The humeral head could have a compression fracture in the posterolateral aspect of the humeral head which is present in about 80% of anterior shoulder dislocation. That can be also seen as edema in the posterolateral aspect of the humeral head. How about alpasa? Alpasa is medial displacement of the inferior glenohumeral ligament, to call it medialized banker. Another scenario, recurrence after surgery in over 65% of the patients because the lesion is not addressed. That will be the bony defect of the scapula. Glad lesion is a tear of the anterior inferior labrum. It is non-displaced, but it has an avulsion of the adjacent glenoid cartilage. This lesion will have an associated glenoid chondral defect. This lesion results from impaction of the humeral head against the glenoid. The patient will have shoulder pain but no instability. The labrum is not detached. So the patient can say, I am glad that I'm not displaced and I'm not unstable. 